I have Facebook friends sending me deals all the time on amplifiers. For example, this 1200 watt monoblock amplifier, which at the time of purchase was $71. I got one in, so let's take a closer look and see what it's all about. We even skip the intro music so we can get straight to it. First, you can see here the base knob and the base cable. This is a metal base knob that has a small potentiometer and one of the ears, the mounting ears, was already bent. But uh, anyway, we'll get back to that. Let's take the amp out of the box, take a closer look. What is this name? M -m 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 Audio Zeroni. That sure don't make much sense, does it? The amp even has silk screen that says, with remote subwoofer level of control included. Yeah, there you go. Audio Zeroni. My, 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 Audio Zeroni. Let's look at one side of the amp here. First, you can see Tiffany style RCAs on a $70 amp. Yes, that's crazy. Gain control goes from 0.1 up to 4 volts. There's a subsonic on and off. We don't know what the frequency is. Bass boost 0 to 6 dB. Again, don't know the frequency. Low pass filter 250 hertz down to 35 hertz with a button for either 12 or 24 dB per octave for the slope. Phase control for 0 to 180 and a telephone connection to call your grandma. On the opposite end, we have power protect LED. On or protect is what it says. And yes, two different colors. One is green and one is orange. Don't ask me how I know orange. Watch all the way to the end of the video. Four gauge for power and ground. That's a remote connection and a single speaker output there with eight gauge connection for hooking up your subwoofer. The amp also has these end caps, which kind of block your access to the power ground remote and the speaker connections. So you have to take that off, which is a little bit of a pain. It also includes this base knob. It is a metal encased base knob, as I mentioned before has a phone cord attached to it and really just a very simple control here for gain when you have it plugged in. So not much to expect from a $71 amp, but hey, at least you do get a base knob, right? As far as dimensions go, the length is 13 inches, which includes both ends, 5.5 inches for the width, two inches for the height, millimeter equivalents are there as well. There is no manual or specs on the box, but according to Amazon, the RMS power and the max power are exactly the same. This is not a Mickey Mouse program! These ratings include 4 ohms 400 watts, 2 ohms 680 watts, 1 ohm 1200 watts. It also says it's linkable, which it's not linking another amp up. I don't know why they said that. So here we have the amp connected up using zero gauge to four gauge adapters to give us maximum juice. And there we go, we powered up. What you'll notice is it takes about five seconds to actually turn green. So it has a very slow turn on. Now, since we don't know what the real ratings are, we're going to find out what the measurements are using the SMD Demore Engineering Amplifier Dyno. If you haven't seen this before, on the left, RMS power output in watts. In the middle, the ohm load. On the right, the voltage. We'll also have the remote display so we can calculate efficiency. This here's my favorite part. First test is going to be 4 ohms. It's rated 400 watts. We have some examples here of how you get 4 ohms. You can have a single 2 ohm dual voice coil subwoofer wired in series. Or you can have two 4 ohm dual voice coil subwoofers wired in series parallel configuration to give you 4 ohms. Let's try certified test first, up to 1% distortion. And we'll notice the amp stops at 180 and then jumps to 357. So it did not count cleanly, so we can't do the efficiency measurement, unfortunately, for this. Let's try uncertified up to the clipping point. It does count cleanly here. See if we can get that 400 watts. And not quite. 373 at 14.37 statistically that's not too bad it's about 10 percent off um you know it's not horrible it's not great either but it should do its rated power but again we don't know if this is max or whatever but we're giving the true numbers here dynamically sending a pulse tone to the amp we get 373 at 14.46 now let's try two ohms this rate is 680 watts the example here is a four ohm dual voice coil subwoofer wired in parallel, gives you two ohms, or you can do two two ohm dual voice coil subwoofers wired in series parallel configuration to get two ohms. Again, rated 680 watts, certified test first and 1% distortion. It stopped at 450 and jumped to 626. So again, not cleanly counting using that certified test. Let's go to the uncertified test. See what we get here up to the clipping point of the amp. And if you have any questions about the different modes, I'll leave a link in the video description. You can see what these different modes mean. Uncertified, we get 658, 14.24. So close, but not quite there. What about 
using the dynamic test. Can we get the 680? Yes, we do. 681, but a little bit higher than 14.4. We have a 14.5 volts. Now the one ohm test, it's rated 1200 watts. Let's try the certified test first, up to 1% distortion. It counts pretty clean here. We're gonna give it a, a go 981 at 14.25. That's actually better than I expected. Uncertified to the clipping point, can we bust a thousand watts? Yes, we can. <laughs> 1057 even our voltage dropped to 14 so almost 1100 watts at 14 volts what about dynamically can we get that 1200 watts man it's getting there can we get another boost here looks like that's all it's going to do 1151 14.48 so not too far and efficiency we actually measured it with that one 67 percent which is about as to be expected for a cheap amp Here's the results. You can pause this if you want to see all the different tests, which we just showed. But please note, if you want to see additional tests, stick around to the very end of the video. That's right. Past the end credits, all the way to the end. You'll see the fun stuff. Now, let's take the bottom panel off and find out what's inside. Class D guts. What a win. Flip the amp over. There are six screws on the bottom. They do require a torque screw. Check the video description for a link to my favorite precision screwdriver, which includes Torx bits for the win. And there you go. Class D, monoblock, goodness. I talked to Sam over at BearVids, and he said this looks like a Maxonics clone. So um, that's interesting. 3300 microfarad, 25 volts for the input filtering. 4700 microfarad, 63 volts for the rails. And those look kind of gold. They look fancy. Also notice the way these clamps are set for the MOSFETs. I haven't seen an amp like this. Sam says he's seen them before, but uh, look kind of kind of rare to me. I like how you can take them off very easily with just a screw. I hate the ones where you have to pry them off. They're too hard to get to. I'm not even a tech. Why do I care? Now let's find out. How does it bump the quad box? So I was just playing this amp here on the quad box and got to the point of clipping and the protect light came on. It is still thinking now I gotta um I gotta disconnect it I, there's a little bit of smoke that came up but you probably can't see it now but uh yeah absolute 100% junk do not buy this smell the cooked electronics I believe I see some burn marks right down in there again I showed this to Sam at Bear Vids he says this is the drive circuit and it appears that the outputs died probably as well as a power supply so it require a full rebuild I'm gonna have to disconnect this and let it sit outside oh man so that sucks no sound test all right so let's get on to the pros and cons things I like things I think that could be better at least to be aware of first off it's inexpensive amazing watts per dollar value Base knob is included, even though it's not very fancy. Tiffany style RCAs, wow, on a $70 amp. 24 dB per octave low pass option for the crossover. And low ohm stable, is it? You have to stick around to the end to find out. What about things that could be better? The base remote potentiometer is very small. It's hard to turn. Single speaker output. Certified test fail. Did not count cleanly. No manual or official ratings. It blew up during the subtest. Unfortunately, I didn't get to show you guys if it bumped though. And is it worth going cheap? That is a good question. Some people think so. I tend to think buy something right the first time and you don't have to keep changing stuff out. I know some people, they live to find these inexpensive amps and hopefully ones that work okay. If you're one of these guys that likes to tinker, likes to spend a little money and play around, then this amp is fine for you. But if you're somebody who likes to install something or have something installed, you don't want to have it touched again for a long time, you need to spend more money and get a better quality product. Things like this, it's a, it's a shot in the dark. You don't know if it's going to last or not. So I would personally not recommend this. I'll leave some links in the video descriptions for other amps I think that are better. Thanks as always for watching. Until next time, Big D, I'm out of here. Now with all that stuff I just said, I did test this amp at 0.8 and lower, which I'm going to show here before I did the sub test. So did I damage the amp doing these tests? It is possible. Uncertified up to clipping at 0.8. We got over 1200 watts. 1222, 14.31. Let's try dynamic burst at 0.8 ohms. 40 hertz. 
Look at this. Almost 1,400. Keeps going up. Our voltage was surging a little bit there. Yep, we got over 1,400. 1,431, but our voltage is a little high at 14.71. Let's drop it a little lower. 0.67, is you crazy? Yeah, that's me. $71 amp, we got to. Uncertified up to clipping, 40 hertz. 1,300 and 4 watts at 14.31. Now what about dynamic? Sending the pulse tone into the amplifier. Over 1,500. Check it out. 1,600. 1,611 at 14.71. Now let's try half an ohm. Resistive. Have I lost my mind? You big dummy. Y'all should know now not to expect anything less than a big dummy. Let's try dynamic half an ohm. Look at this. Almost 1,900 watts. 1,879. Did we damage the amp? I don't know. Maybe. It was still fun. Big D out. You know how them sound waves go?